What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to another Weaver Beats 2 video where we react to something. I haven't been able to stream lately because I'm kind of sick, so I'm going to do this one just offline. There's no chat, so hopefully there'll be less distractions. So today we're going to be checking out why does every recording studio have a lava lamp? And then it says in the thumbnail, it's not what you think. So, I mean, according to this thumbnail, at least, it's giving off the impression to me that it has something to do with tape right i think it has something to do with reel to reel tape i believe that's what it is i don't know I'm not, I'm not an expert on tape let's see what it is i don't know personally i've never really seen that in any of the studios i've been in so i wouldn't say every recording studio has one but you know maybe everyone that has tape in it i don't know maybe it's giving away too much in the thumbnail here because i think that's what it's going to be about all right let's check it out so you know how the word rewind i mean maybe we'll learn something here today i like to learn I hope you guys like to learn too. So you know how the word rewind means to wind a tape back up onto the reel that it came from? Mm -hmm. Like literally, you would record on a reel of tape like this. You'd listen to music on a cassette and movies were on VHS tapes like this. God, tapes were the worst, man. Like I get like the, the analog quality is kind of cool, but the whole rewinding thing is just sh I fucking hate that. I've always hated that. And I'm glad to never go back. I'm cool with analog records, vinyl records, because you get that sound quality and you can still skip around on the record relatively easily. But tape always sucked, in my opinion. I don't have that kind of time. I don't think anyone should have that kind of time in the modern age. So the word rewind made total sense. But now that everything is digital, we still use that word. Like I'll rewind a podcast or a song that I'm listening to on title, even though there's no tape involved. And now there are kids who have never touched a tape in their lives out there using the word rewind. I'm sad to break it to this guy. It's been that way for quite some time. Yeah, yikes. Cringe, bro. You don't even know what rewind is. You don't even know what it is. That's cringe, man. Ugh. Ugh. You don't know what rewind actually means? You don't even know where that came from? Man, am I old. <laughs> but anyway, today I want to talk about some things music producers and studios do even though they may not even understand the reasons behind it to the point where it's almost out of date or just plain wrong. Yeah, some might say, yeah, it is out of date. There are some fun theories as to where these uh, traditions, we'll call them, uh, come from. So let's dive in with number one. And this video blew up for this too. 3.4K subs, 130K views, dude, Jesus, man. Give me, I need that juice, man. So when condenser mics first came out, tube mics were all rage, but there was one problem. The heat from the vacuum tube could rise as he does, meaning that the sensitive diaphragm of the mic could get pretty hot during long sessions. So engineers smarter than me had the bright idea to just flip the thing upside down. Mm. So nowadays, most tube mics can handle being operated right side up, and some, like this Sony mic, have heat sick. Bro, that one just looks like a massage gun. It is a massage gun. Stop lying to us right now. That's a massage gun, pal. Thinks and radiators built in to disperse the heat before it even becomes a problem. Now, there's a case to be made that it's easier to hang a mic upside down sometimes for certain applications, but there's no technical reason to turn the mic over. Yet in studios around the world, you'll still see engineers micing singers, acoustic guitars, and tons of other instruments with the mic upside down. Heck, I even have a bunch of mics that look like they're vintage, and I'll mount them upside down just because it looks right for that type of mic. Or the lols, you know. Even though they don't have tubes at all. It's just something we do sometimes. Thankfully, there's nothing about using a mic upside down that makes it sound worse, but there's one more piece of studio gear that countless people mount in funny directions that actually does have an effect on their sound. Okay. But we'll get to that later, because I want to talk about something else that relates to tubes heating up. And this is something we've all seen before. See if you can spot it in this picture. The lava lamp. You gave it away in the title, pal. Come on, come on. It doesn't work so well when you... <laughs> or this picture. Well, other than the lava lamp, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of rock and roll. Also, this dude's got the cheap DJ mixer in front of the analog board. What? Weird. Like it's kind of just blocking your access to it. Or this one. Okay, we got it. Yes, yes. Yep, it's this absolute studio classic right here. Wait, maybe they have lava lamps in studios because they're fucking hippies. Maybe it's just they're hippies. Here. The lava lamp. I love lamp. <laughs> I love lamp too. So there are a few different theories as to why everyone has lava lamps in their studios. So if anyone has any insight on why we do this, let me know. Now my favorite. Oh my God. 
Wait, what? I thought you knew, man. My favorite theory that I found when researching this video is that the lava takes about the same amount of time to warm up as a tube does in a tube amp, a preamp, or a mic. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Now, I couldn't find a definitive source on this, but it's a cool enough theory that maybe I'll just choose to believe it. I think they're just hippies, man. I just think they're hippies. Hippies love lava lamp. Get yours in the link in the description. Oh my fucking god, bruh. This is a bro moment right here. This is just a this is just a gate to this affiliate, this Amazon affiliate link. Hey, you didn't disclose this, pal. You didn't disclose this is an affiliate link. You're you're in trouble. I'm telling the FTC. I'm getting on the phone with them right now. Matter of fact, <laughs> you're f you're f dude. Now, another reason I read is that watching the lava go up and down while sitting around waiting for tapes to rewind makes me feel high for the singers to catch their breath between takes is a lot more entertaining than sitting and doing nothing. But it's not perceived as rude, like reading a book or I really feel like he's reading a teleprompter. Like I'm not, it's not looking directly at me. Maybe he's looking at the, the mirror on the camera. I don't know. Stimulation to keep you engaged while still being able to listen critically. So let's put that theory to the test. If at any point during this video, you start to get bored, just watch the pretty colors go up and down. Maybe that's why this video blew up, dude. What? What? I just got, oh, dude. And then Wavy Webster has lava lamps in the backgrounds of his videos. Guys, guys, <laughs> let me cook. Let me cook really quickly. Okay, guys, I have found it, the metric for algorithmic success. So if at any time during this video, you feel like you're getting bored, just look at this behind me, all right? It'll, get, it'll help you get to the end because I know I'm so boring when I talk, all right? Okay, guys, I have the secret to algorithmic success here. Let's get back to the video. This is gonna be a banger. And now when I'm waiting on mix downs or for Melodyne transfers, I, I just drop some LSD. Try just watching this instead of whipping out my phone. <laughs> I, thought he was going, I thought he was going a different direction with that. Instead of whipping out my phone. <sighs> you know, and while I'm waiting for Melodyne transfers or, you know, a mix down to render, instead of whipping out my <laughs> I'll just look at the lava lamp. Sorry, buddy. Warm up while I talk about the next tradition. Now, the next one is something I'm guilty of myself. And it I know, dude, I knew who stole the sign. It's, it was Venus Theory, dude. He's a thief, man. I can't remember what the mic was. It was SM7, no, no, SM57. I think it was SM57. He stole the SM57 that one time. Don't leave your mics around him, dude. Makes sense until you really think about it. So lots and lots of studios, including my very first studio, Sunray Recording Studio, have a logo that prominently features a sure Super 55 style mic, which we didn't even use in our studio. And it seems like every week I see a new studio with pretty much the same logo. It's just people recycling the same idea. I don't think it's that complicated, but maybe I'm wrong. But why? So if you haven't heard of RCA Studio B, it's one of the most historic studios of all time, and it's in Nashville. And their current logo also features the Super 55, which- That logo's not good. Am I crazy? It's like several different fonts. And then the, the eye connects to like the mic, but not even like in a good way. What's going on here? Is a mic that is commonly associated with Elvis. Yes, the Elvis who recorded at RCA's oh, okay. studio. Okay, I thought you were talking about some other Elvis, okay. All the time. Now- in Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> my research, I wasn't able to find any photos of anyone recording at Studio B with a Super 55, even Elvis. Yet it's the star of the logo. Now, my best guess is that they wanted to draw upon the association with Elvis with a nod to his famous mic, even though he used it almost exclusively. Man, this is like, you're thinking way too deep about this. I think it's just like, it was a common mic back then. It was used very often and people were just like, well, you know, people, that's a mic. That's a mic, you know? ...at his concerts. So this mic isn't really known as a studio mic at all, but something about its look seems to signify this is a recording studio, especially when you slap it on a logo or on a sign. So the same way that a chief statue signifies a tobacco shop. Okay, I was thinking it was signifying cultural appropriation. Or a red. <laughs> My brain is just interneted at this point. I don't know. Pepper tells you that they're- Are you guys tuned into these lava lamps, by the way? Mm. Gonna be tacos inside a building. A Super 55 style mic has become the insignia for recording studios, even though they often don't. Yo, comment down below if you think I should keep the lava lamp background just going. Should I just keep it going for the next few of these or forever? Let me know. I have one inside. If you look for inspiration for your own studio logo, 
The Super 55 is plastered all over design template sites. So it only makes sense that producers, not being expert graphic designers, would gravitate toward this style of logo. That's a decent theory. The RCA Studio B has another piece of gear that I want to talk about. One that's renowned in the studio world. The iconic Yamaha NS10 speaker. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at a couple of those right now, actually. Oh, no, dude. No, I hate this. I hate this. I hate when people put them sideways, especially when they put them inward. When you put the tweeters inward, I don't get it. I don't get it. Now the NS It's like the opposite of how you would actually listen to music. It doesn't make sense. Putting the bass, you just kind of have like a narrow image. Tens were released in 1978 to so-so reviews, but they quickly became a hit in studios, leading to variations like the NS10M Studio, a purpose-built monitor that's just for recording studios. There were some NS10s designed to lay on their side, as well as some that were meant to stand upright. It's pretty easy to know which is which based on the logo's orientation, but I think the sideways speakers are more iconic, meaning the up and down ones, they look a little bit off. Even I don't think so. Today though, you'll see the effects of this in studios around the world, where owners of the modern Yamaha mm. HS series speakers will commonly put them on their side. Yeah, I like how just putting this guy on blast here. Look at this, look at this doofus right here with the modern ones. Who is an idiot. You can tell he's stupid because he's got a headband. We'll commonly put them on their sides, even though they're explicitly designed to stand vertically. I've seen countless producers set up their HS speakers on the sides, and the what? comments are always sure to let them know that they've got them sideways. What? Hey, I don't know if you know this, but you have your speakers sideways, idiot. You probably couldn't tell because you're so f***ing stupid. You have your speakers sideways. Just thought I'd let you know because you're f***ing dumb. By the way, if you actually stuck around to watch the thing melt, I'm sorry. It's... It's going so slow. I didn't realize it would take this long. Didn't deliver, dude. What the heck? There's also a somewhat common misconception that NS10 speakers are 100% flat when it comes to frequencies. Who the f thinks that, dude? You have to be just so new to music production if you think that. Like, no monitor or headphone is completely flat. Like, maybe like flat ish, which is even still like a. That's hyperbole for sure, because like I said, nothing is flat. But that's not entirely true. And I've got a little pet theory of my own that I've been working on as to why NS10s feel flatter than they are to most producers. So subscribe here if you want to see that video when it comes out. But in the meantime, I kind of like watching this guy because he just feels so new to this. Like it, it has like a like a slightly nervous, shy energy to it. But he seems to know his stuff, you know? Whatever you use, if your speakers are on their sides, just double check the product manual and make sure that you're setting them the oh, way that the nice manufacturer guy. intended. And if you like this style of video essay, then check out this playlist because I've got a bunch more on the channel. Well, you only got seven more, but that was pretty cool stuff, man. Adam Sliger, check him out if you haven't. I'll link it down in the description. Pretty cool information here. I mean, I was interested enough to check it out because I've never really heard of the Lav Lamp and Recording Studio thing, but it kind of does make sense because I do feel like I have seen a few from time to time, but it's not something that really registered in my mind because I haven't seen I haven't seen it in the studios that I've actually like interned or worked in at any point. But that's only there's only a handful, you know, not even a handful, like two. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Seems pretty new here. How long has he been here? How long has he been on the YouTube? Link 58 videos, uh, like a year or two. If you're new here, make sure to follow, subscribe. If you want to support channel, subscribe to my Patreon, we're going to be a channel for as low as $5 a month to get access to exclusive content, kind of like this, but actual stuff that doesn't get recorded or streamed anywhere, etc. See you guys next time. Incorporated.